And yes, I've been joined by, um, you know, a, an instructor, actually, a fitness instructor. And he's been joining us every morning on TV3 New Day to encourage us to stay fit. Today, we're going to test him a little bit and talk a bit more about obesity. We'll also be joined by a dietitian shortly. But if you log on to da uh, dailymail.com, pardon me, it says here that obese people are more than three times likely to die of COVID-19 and seven times more likely to need a ventilator. Uh, this has been revealed uh, by experts. It says that overweight people are more than three times as likely, and people who have extra weights defined as a body mass index of over 25 are also at higher odds of needing ventilation when ill with COVID-19 by sevenfold. You will remember that the president uh, in addressing the nation a few times uh, mentioned the need for us to eat healthy and to exercise because all that will help in boosting your immune system so you can fight COVID-19 if it should even attack your system. And so Randy Cote is joining us. And like I said, we'll get a dietitian to tell us more about that. But let Randy Cote tell us what exactly when we say someone is obese, you have been working with a number of these people. What does it really mean, Randy? Sure. When we say someone is obese, as you said earlier on, it means the body mass index is not right. And with the body mass index, it's basically, you know, your weight and then your height, you know, um, with everybody with your required height, you know, there's, there's an amount of weight that you can put on, okay? Mm. And then the shorter you are, the more, you know, riskier it is if you're heavier. You know, okay. when you're tall, it can spread out. So basically when your body mass index, which of course, if anybody's wondering how to test the body mass index, you can go online and check it. It's one of the regular things you can do, and it will tell you if you're obese or not. So if you're 25, between 25 to um, 40, mm -hmm. you're actually considered overweight. Okay, you're not considered obese. But you're, you're considered, considered overweight. If it's 25 to 40, yes. what? Kilograms yes, 25 or to... what is it? What's the measurement? <laughs> no, no, with, with the, with the um, BMI, it's yeah. not in kilograms, so it's not, in, it's not the weight. It's actually the combination of food. Okay. So then between 25 to 40, you're considered to be overweight, which mm -hmm. is still a bad thing. But then from 40 and above, that's when you're considered to be obese. But okay. you also and mentioned when, that when... it's dependent on your height. So let's just yeah, say... Someone like mm -hmm. me, I'm a 5'4". Sometimes I like to say I'm a 5'5". Five five. So in my yeah. case, at what point am I overweight? And at what point am I obese? Uh, let's say, moving for let's say 80 and above. Then five I'm... 5'5", five, let's say from... Yeah, let's say if you're you in the 90, 90 kgs and above, then you are considered overweight. Okay. Once you hit the 100, 110, then you are obese now. How because do that I way know? You're, yeah. you're saying that we can log online and see. So... Um, yeah, quickly, I left out point. the tall people. So the tall people, if you're maybe like a six or a five nine, yeah. at what point do you know yeah. that you are overweight? Let's say a hundred and twenty and above. One hundred and twenty, that's fine. That's when you know you are getting overweight. But then if you go to let's say one forty, then you know you are hitting the obese side. I see. So as you as you know, or just you can just go online. You know, just input, just look for BMI calculator. Okay, BMI mm -hmm. calculator. Okay. And then it gives you the place where you can input your height. And then All right. it gives you the place where you can input your weight. So you do both. And then it tells you your number. No, so but if you don't know your weight, house. if you don't know your weight, then that's the thing. Because that's when you have to stand, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. on what's it called? Yeah. Uh, the scale. The scale, exactly, to know your weight. Yeah. So you have to yeah. combine exactly. that with your height. With your height, yes. Oh. And you know if, if you're overweight or if you're obese. I see. But would you say that it's the food we eat that's causing yeah. a lot of us to become obese or overweight? Or is it more about lifestyle, maybe laziness? Uh, what no, exactly no, is I, it? I think, I think, I think, I think it's, it's mostly the food we eat, you know? And also in this part of the world, in this part of our country, most of our staple foods are carb-based. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we find things like banku, kinky, gari, you know, so we, we focus more on the carbs, more than the protein and let's say the veggies, the vitamins and stuff like okay. that. So it's more of the foods that we eat that makes us obese than our lifestyle. Okay. Because okay. fitness, as we all know it, sorry. Fitness, we're not, we we're not ruling it, out, you know, eating fufu mm -hmm. and banku completely. Oh, no, 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 no. We're okay. not ruling out there. Because hey, some of us won't survive. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. But what, yeah, we eat in portions. Is, exactly, exactly. You know, too much of everything is bad and okay. as you know as organic as we think our foods are as as right as we think it is the honest truth is that sometimes the carbs are too much and so, we have to you know balance it 
Okay, that's interesting. And we'll be having a dietitian, like I said, uh, join us yeah. so that they can break it down for us. Because Randy's role is more to help you lose the weight after you have consumed, uh, you know, the junk. Exactly. And so the nutritionist yeah. will let us know what and what we should avoid because it's important that yeah. we talk about it. it. So, so basically, it Randy, it I mean, how easy <laughs> yeah. or difficult is it to lose the weight? I mean, especially knowing that at this point, you're very likely yeah. to succumb to COVID-19 if your BMI is, what, 25 and above? Yeah. Yes, if it's 25 and above, if it's 25 and above. So usually how yeah, so do we manage how, to lose? Yeah. Okay, so what, the first thing that we should all know when it comes to weight loss is that it's a gradual process, okay? And in as much as we would want to, you know, really lose the weight very fast, we should, we should be able to take it um, one step at a time. You know, the required amount of pounds that you can lose weekly, the healthy you know, as one to two pounds weekly, you know, anything above that you are putting your body at risk. Mm. So it's very, it's, it's very difficult and it's very easy. You know, mostly it, it really, it really bases most on the person's motivation, you know, okay. but one thing I always say is that, yes, you know, some people, you tell them that, oh, you have to lose the weight and they're like, mm, how long is it going to take? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, considering the number of pounds that you'd have to lose or you have to shed off, it's going to take, let's say two or three months. And then they go like, oh my God, two or three months. That's mm -hmm. a lot. I might just go and drink this or I might just do this. No. Yeah. At the end, at the end of the day, you know, there's no two ways about hard work and sweat. Okay. You you have to work out properly and then you have to eat properly. And okay. you have to take your time. You don't have to rush through things. Because if you overly push your body, you might break down. Okay. Ah. And if you break down, you're, you're yes. If you overly push your body, you might break down. And if you break down, how are you going to lose the weight? So well, what it's, if, it's relatively... Yeah. Yeah, you're saying. What, what if you're saying. I don't want to exercise? What else can I mm -hmm. do to either... I mean, mm -hmm. to prevent it, obviously, you have to live a better life. But how do I lose it without exactly. necessarily exercising? <laughs> Is there a way? <laughs> Get a broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, actually. <laughs> that is true. But I mean, if you are not I'm, lucky enough to get a broken I'm, heart, what do you do? I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know, if... If, if, if you're not going to work out and you want to lose the weight, I'm not saying it's not possible. Okay? It's possible. You know, that's, you, then you have to be on a very strict diet. And when that happens, you know, now that you are, you are, you are, you are taking out the workout part, then you should know that as for you, things like junk and things like that, they're not going to be a portion, mm. you know. But at the end of the day, you still need some form of, you know, movement and mobility. And I always say, you know, workout doesn't have to be vigorous. You don't have to always be lifting things. You know, even a walk, you know, 10, 15 minutes during the day is okay. You know, taking the stairs instead of using the elevator at work, you know, petty, 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 petty things. I mean, just get the body moving, mm -hmm. get the body moving. You don't necessarily have to be in the gym every single day yeah. to, 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 to actually share the fat. Even though it's faster, you know, mm -hmm. if you're working out and then you're eating right, it's, it's, just, it's just faster. Yeah. Okay. So what are some of the basic steps or moves yeah. that we can do to help us lose the weight gradually. Like you said, it's not an instant, you know, results um, that you get. Takes, it will take a while. You know, as I was saying, it takes a while because I don't even think it's fair. You find someone that has eaten like bad food, junk, lived a bad lifestyle for mm. years, years, eight, seven years, and then you have a pot belly and then you want to lose it in what, one month. It's, mm -hmm. not even, it's not even fair. Come on, you've lived the wrong lifestyle for a long time. You might as well understand that it's going to take some time. Some of the basic things, especially during this whole COVID thing and the whole social distance thing yeah. is that you, sh you can walk, as I said earlier, you can take walks. Walks are, you know, it's, it's actually therapeutic because mm -hmm. one thing to have a walks is that when you walk, you get to think a lot, you know, uh, you can take some more. If you get a chance to use the pool, you can swim enough. If you like dancing, I mean, mm. you can put on your favorite, you know, tunes and start yeah. jamming to it, you know, okay. things like that. I mean, anything to get, you know, the body moving and, blood pumping okay so it, does, it doesn't fine. really matter because you know sometimes they'll say if you want to lose the fat around your thighs there are special mm -hmm. you know steps or moves for it so oh, does oh it... yes i mean yeah, it, it does matter you see but right now we're actually looking at like things that are actually going to just get us healthy okay we're okay. not looking at you know targeting of course you can't you can't expect to be losing thigh muscles if you are doing bicep kills you know but i'm trying to put us in a, in a place where is going to benefit everybody, you mm. know. And then the first thing and the most important thing now is to actually, you know, get, you know, healthy. And with a healthy living or health, being healthy, it doesn't require, the rest is cosmetic. I want to have big thighs. I want to have a bigger chest. Mm -hmm. Those things are cosmetic. Okay. But the baseline of all of that is actually being stronger and actually being healthier. 
And that I doesn't see. require much. You okay. see, that's when I'm talking about the walks and swimming and dancing and stuff like that. I mean, if you want to have the bigger everything, that one that you have to put in extra work with. I see. All right. Extra thing. Thank you so much, Randy, for speaking to us. Randy is a fitness instructor, and we're talking about so much, the Bella. possibility. Okay, well, I'm getting a dietitian. I was actually going to wait and connect with him later. But let me just read okay. what exactly it is that we're discussing. Now, it says here that overweight people are three times more likely to die of COVID-19 and seven times more likely to need a ventilator. And this is a study that came out during the weekend. It's been reported all across the U.S. and the U.K. And it's important that we speak about it. Randy, you hold on for me. Let me uh, okay. hold on. Let me speak to my nutritionist, Nana Kofi Owusu, and he just joined us. Uh, now, let me spotlight. Hi, Nana. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. All right. Nana, we're talking obes obesity and the fact that you're very likely to die from COVID-19 if you are obese. Randy has already given us a breakdown of who an obese person is. Since you are a dietitian, let's talk about the kind of foods that we eat that could land us in that space. Okay, so uh, it's mainly about excessive caloric intake. So it's intake and output, what is going in and what is coming out. And if what is going in is more than what is coming out, then you are likely to store excess as fat. Mm. So output is mainly in exercise or physical activity, but input is in caloric intake. So the uh, baseline, you're talking about how many times are you eating in a day? Are you snacking? Excessive mm. snacking is one major factor. There are some people who buy good fruit, they buy kosi, they buy... Oh, 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 <laughs> Nana Kofi, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Nana, hold on, pause, pause there. Okay, I'll need you to just shift a little away from the light, so to your right. Okay. No, 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 to, uh, to your right. I mean, aha, uh -huh, yes. Yeah. Okay, I think this is better. Thank you so much. Now, before I catch you, you said, well, the people who buy both loads and things, why, why are you doing that to us? There are some people who are happy go buyers. They want to buy everything. So they'll sit in the market, both loads is mm -hmm. passing the buy, Katia cake is passing the buy. Uh -huh. uh, Kilo, but, <laughs> but I thought they said snacking is good in between meals. It's good to eat but something. This is, this is, the wrong snacking, you need to snack with the fruits. Ah, you know, okay. That's the best snack to have. I see with a fruit. Okay. Yes. You, we've had you. We'll, we'll work on that. So it's important. That thing is one excessively <laughs> fried food intake. Okay. Now some people want to fry everything. They fry yam. They fry plantain. They fry fish. They fry egg. You know, egg pancake. They want to fry three eggs at a time. You know, they want to even carrot. People are frying carrots. <laughs> <laughs> what is fry, is? One of the things, let me show you this. One gram of carbohydrate uh -huh. gives you four units of energy. Uh -huh. One gram of protein gives you four units of energy. But one gram of fat will give you nine units of energy. Uh -huh. So how much oil is on your soup or your stew? Do you have a sea of Galilee on your stew? Hey. That way you are taking excessive fat and it will lead to weight gain. You know, and if you eat your food and underneath it, you have fat all over it, you drink your light soup and your fingers are painted as if you are, you are, you are doing a manicure and your fingers are painted with oil, then uh -huh. it means that you are taking too much fat and that will give you a problem. Next thing, refined foods intake. How much of your food is filled with fiber? Uh -huh. The moment you are a lot of refined foods, then the calories are going up, the energy is coming too much, and you store the rest at fat, and it will give you obesity. So make sure your porridges are not just with rice, water, egg, with baby meat. <laughs> so your porridges also are old, sweet, stone brown, morocco, cocoa, soup. And then increase your fiber. Why do you take rice and gravy alone and add chicken? Rice and gravy with salad, or mix the wheat with the rice, mix the okay. rice with the wheat, and get some fiber going. The fiber is the way to reduce how much calories you are taking. Oh, you I know? see. And if, if you eat and you are not full, add soups to it. That's the way to go. Wait, wait, wait. If you eat and you are not full, add what? Soup? Ooh, light soup. But you're the one saying that light soup also has oil and, you know, if your fingers are painted after. So how do we add so, on? So you do a fish light soup and not a goat or a light soup. 
Okay. Because that one will draw its fat onto the soup. There are some fish slices when you take, you see it's very uh, low in fat. You know, okay. when you are aging, the fat that you need is not a lot. Fat okay. is not bad, but too much of it is a problem. Another one, soft drinks intake. Mm. And you see in Ghana, people want to eat and then they will have, a, they will heave the rice like a mountain before Zeruba Bell. And then they will clear to become like a plane. And when they finish, they want to add something which is chilled, some chilled soft drink to pass through their throat and they'll say they are living good. The soft drink is giving you extra calories, even more than you need. Why okay. don't you just take your rice at a separate location and take your mineral at a separate location? If you do that, then you are helping yourself. I see. Well, because you've touched on some of these meals, just give us so portions or what are some of the meals we should stop taking completely? You're talking about good light soup and all that. I totally get that. But let's come to carbohydrates because that is a staple here in Ghana, a lot of people cannot yes. eat without some carbohydrates. So what are yes. the ones we should avoid? What are the ones that we should have? And when you talk about fruits as well, what kind of fruits and vegetables? So it's mainly, uh, Bella, it's about combinations. Mm. So if it's not, no food is bad. No okay. food should be avoided. Food should be combined well. Mm. So if you're taking rice and you are adding a salad you're helping yourself if you are taking something like cake or banku mm -hmm. which has you are helping yourself if you are taking something like yam and palava sauce or yam and and, and uh, contumely soup or whatever there must be a vegetable base to the carbohydrate okay. so that it will reduce the amount of the carbohydrate you are taking Quantity is of essence. How okay. much of the food are you, are you having two bowls of genki at the time? Young lady, you are hurting yourself. Okay. If you take three muscles of fufu, you are hurting yourself. So if you take fufu and you are taking, uh, every time you want to add palm nut soup or you want to add granite soup, then you are increasing the calories. If your fufu comes with ebunebunu, it comes with light soup, which is a little low in fat, mm. then you can moderate the quantity of the fufu that you add and you'll be on your way to helping yourself. Okay, we've been talking to Randy about exercising to lose the weight. And we asked him what other things you can do so you lose the weight. Since you are a dietitian, there's a message from Beverly. She's watching and she says, can drinking water make me lose weight? It is a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie. Drinking, yes. That drinking water makes you gain weight. It's not true. It's no. not really It doesn't make you gain. It doesn't make you lose, by the way. Rather, yes, because if you have cravings, you are tempted to snack and you drink copious amounts of water, momentarily it will fill your stomach so that your mind will go off the intake of the carbohydrate or the food. So okay. yes, it will help you to lose weight. So that means if I'm obese and I'm trying to lose weight but I'm not ready to go to the gym, I can rely on drinking water? You should be ready to go to the gym uh, or you should be ready to do some exercise because you see, Diet in itself is not exclusive. Mm. It will lead to a point. There's a place where you plateau. There's something we call set point theory. Set point theory means that when you are losing weight, it gets to a place where you are stuck. Mm -hmm. And you need to raise your basal metabolism. Your body must be activated to work more. And exercise is what will cause your body to. I mean, we should not be in a hurry to go for quick fixes. I want uh, 800 kilo calorie diet, fast diet to lose to uh, 20 kilos in one month. Get yourself in a lifestyle um, change that mm -hmm. you can do consistently for the longer. If not, you will lose the weight and you regain it with the speed of life. I see. Now, I want to also talk about some of the illnesses that come with obesity. Now we're learning that, you know, you're three times likely to die from it if you should contract COVID-19. And so what are some of the other illnesses? Is it just because you're fat, that's why you're likely to die? Or is it because the obesity leads to other illnesses? Yes, obesity will lead to uh, number one, diabetes. We okay. will first give you impaired glucose tolerance, then you move to over diabetes okay. because the fat will get stuck on your uh, insulin receptors. There are some receptors on your cells that receive insulin to enter the cell. So if there's a lot of fat around it, your body becomes resistant to the insulin, and that way you can have uh, impaired glucose tolerance. You will not be clear 
able to clear the glucose from your blood as you're supposed to. Mm. So that is one diabetes could come. Hypertension could come because your body must now pump. Your heart must pump uh, blood to a greater body surface area and to a greater body size. And okay. that means that the blood pressure must be raised for you to go there. Now your diaphragm itself becomes weaker. Your ability to breathe becomes weaker when you are obese. So you hear people snoring a lot when they are obese. You hear okay. people who are, who are Wait, darkness. Hold on. Did you say snoring yes. is as a result of obesity? Because there are people yes, who are very skinny, but they still snore. Yes. Yes, you would have that. That one is mainly okay. due to blockage in the okay. Uh, okay. nasal region. But usually, the obese people are the ones who snore. Their stomach could be moving up and down. It's very scary. Because when you're obese, your diaphragm must do extra work to give you the problem. And also because COVID-19 is an oxygen-related illness, when you have difficulty in breathing because of a big body size and a weakened diaphragm, mm. then chances of dying from COVID-19 is very high. The research is showing that uh, out of about 80% um, of non-survivors mm -hmm. in China were obese, were found to be obese. Mm. Not survivors for COVID-19 were found to be obese in China. Okay, that's scary. Only, yes, only 18.9% of survivors were, were found to be obese. So, so it means that the chances of surviving from COVID-19 is higher when you are not obese. Mm. And it is worsened when you are obese. You have inflammation increasing when you're obese. So you see the, your, your lungs in itself become inflamed when you have COVID-19. And so breathing is difficult. Obesity is a pro-inflammatory thing. It okay. leads to more inflammation because of oxidation. Your fat cells will receive oxygen and it will oxidize. And that will lead to uh, inflammation. Free radicals will be produced and you have problems in your lung region. So when you're obese, it's not good mm. for every disease, but more so for COVID-19, it's a worst case scenario. So if you really want to be safe, I mean, I was very happy when during the lockdown, people were exercising, yeah. were going, now it's the same to be weighing down and i think that we must uh, call on people to start exercising again and eating right some people took advantage of the lockdown and gained kilos mm. uh, but they must also shed it if you want to be safe all right okay but if i'm exercising and and randy i'll bring you in on this before i wrap up if i'm exercising constantly and still eating all the junk food am i safe because i'm burning it anyway because they would usually tell you that when you're in the gym and, and Nana Kofi, I'm asking you, when you're in the gym, you know, because you're doing a lot of exercise and, you know, putting your muscles under pressure, you have to eat so that it will fill up the muscles. That's what we hear. So is that so, true and is it good? So when you're in the gym and you're exercising, you, you need to eat normally. Because if you are eating to lose weight and you are exercising and you are refilling the thing, it's, it's almost useless. Okay. I, I observe people go for kefit and when they finish the kefit, they come and sit behind balls of KK and bottles. Of, mm. of, of alcohol. That is uh, deceptive. Okay. You might even lose the weight, but then you have a lot of fat in your blood. We call something TOFI, T O F I. Mm -hmm. Thin outside, fat inside. You could be slim, but still have a lot of cholesterol in your blood. And that can even increase your risk of getting um, um, weakened or debilitated by COVID-19. So I think that if you are losing weight, if you are exercising, eat your normal food. You can even reduce the quantity. Mm. That's why you need a dietitian in every gym to help you manage your diet so that you can lose the weight that you want to. I see. Let me quickly come to Randy, then I wrap up. Randy, so then um, how often should I exercise in a week? We've heard three times a week, um, you know, all that. So really, you are, um, you know, an instructor. What should we do? How many times a week should I exercise? So basically, as I said earlier on, you know, everyone's system is different, okay? And I can't sit here and actually give a general, you know, number of days or number of hours that everyone should exercise, okay? But starting as a, like starting with everybody, like I'm, I'm assuming everyone hasn't worked out before or everyone hasn't worked out in a long time, you know, 10 to 15 minutes walk a day can be okay. You know, and as time goes on, you can increase it. Someone like me, for instance, I work out every other day. 
Just because okay. I've been working out for the last nine years, and then my body has adapted. Yo, but for okay. someone that hasn't worked out in the last two, three years, mm -hmm. if you put him in the gym, in like even the next hour or two, the person can pass out. Mm -hmm. So for a beginner, let's say we all haven't worked out before, we can start with less with 10, 15 minutes walk every day, you know, okay. just to get the blood pumping, just to get the body moving. And, you know, as time goes on, as the week goes by, you increase it, okay? okay? But one thing too is that, as I said earlier on, do not over push yourself. Mm. Okay, our uh, senior nutritionist said earlier on that, you know, it takes time. And it's true, it takes time for you to lose all the weight. And I like the fact that he pointed out that you shouldn't go for these quick fixes, okay? Mm -hmm. The right way is for you to eat right and for you to work out properly. So then you start like a day, you see how it goes, you, you measure yourself, but you know you are feeling uncomfortable, you stop. The next day you increase the little by little by little. Yeah. And also rest is very important. Hmm. Rest is very important. Working out every single day is not the best. Okay. Working out every single day is not the best. Rest is very important. Your body needs time to recover, to repair. You know what happens when you're working out is that you retain muscles, okay? Mm -hmm. And then as you said earlier, on, I would like to address is that the fact that you're working out doesn't mean you can eat anything. Okay. It doesn't work like that, mm. okay? The fact that you're working out doesn't mean you can eat anything, Okay. Because your body needs fuel to, 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 to grow. Your body needs fuel to recover. But it's like saying that, okay, I'm a car. And then because I'm a nice car, I'll put petrol, I mean, I'll put um, kerosene in the car mm -hmm. because the car is moving instead of petrol. No, whether you like it or not, whether you are working out or not, whether the car is moving or not, the car is designed for petrol. Mm. You understand? So with the healthy things, there's no compromise. Okay. Whether you are, you are working out or you're not working out, you still have to eat healthy. Okay, you still have to eat healthy. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Thank you so much uh, to Nana Kofi Owusu. He's a dietitian. And we also had Randy Kote, who is a fitness instructor. And they were just schooling us on uh, how obesity could lead to you losing your life. In actual fact, studies have shown that you're three times more likely to die from COVID-19 if you're obese and also very likely to go on a ventilator. And so on that note, thank you, gentlemen, one more time. Later